Peace, Shalom. All oh, praise the Al Bashim Al Bashah. Hey, real quick. Um, topic came up about uh, it's a locking topic. It's been coming out about exposing the Edomites for who they really are. You know, because uh, we saw so-called Caucasians. You know, they've ruled over us for so long that now, you know, the real history is coming out. They're doing everything they can to try to argue it down. But uh, you can't change prophecy and you can't change history. You can't. It's too late because these Edomites are waking up to who we are. They're waking up to who they are. You know, all that information is coming out. But I just wanted to get some quick info on Herod. You know, we've all... I know myself, you grew up in the church, you read about Herod, the story of Jesus, and uh, it's kind of a mythology thing, you know, it's, it's not mythology, but you don't really understand and uh, have that 100% belief that that stuff really happened. Uh, I'll just be honest with you, I, I know for me, it was just kind of like, it's just something to do, but uh because our people, they don't, they don't follow up on the customs of the scriptures. They don't follow up on the uh, commandments of the scriptures. You know, in the in the church, you, they go off. They go off. It's kind of a the church has always been kind of a uh, a party, a feel good fest. Because you know, we were we were sla we were enslaved, and now this is a chance for us to finally uh, be able to let loose and, and worship our God. So. You know, we, we fall into the mindset that, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be how I want it to be, and it's going to be according to what feels good to me, and it becomes a, a, a fest, a festival. Uh, and it's nothing wrong with celebration. It's nothing wrong with that, but there's a time and a place for everything. And uh, you have some, uh, like the Passover, it's a solemn assembly. It's considered a solemn assembly because you had... Uh, uh, you had uh, that was when the Lord came through. He sent his the angel uh, through, and if you didn't have that blood over your doorpost, you didn't have that uh, belief, and you put didn't put that blood over your doorpost, that 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 death angel would kill you and would destroy you. And then uh, you know, of course, the Lord f delivered us from Egypt, and we were grateful for that. And that was a that was a that was a crazy time, but uh, now you know we're back uh, in this society. And one thing you notice about being in America, we don't celebrate our freedom from captivity from America. That's not a that's not a celebration that we partake in because we're not really free. This is still a captivity for us. You still have to get up and go to work. You got to pay your taxes. You got to do all that. The only thing that happened was uh, you, we were emancipated, which emancipation, uh, the true definition of the word, uh, I believe they said you have to go in the law's dictionary, the black's dictionary. Uh, it means from tr uh, transfer from private ownership to public ownership. So that's what happened. We were transfer Our ownership was transferred from the slave masters to the state, excuse me, to the United States of America. But uh, I don't want to talk your ear off uh, going back in the Herod. Now, these Edomites even know that it is generally accepted that Herod was born around 73 BCE in Idumea, south of Judea. He was the second son of Antipater, the Idumea. Idumea, we know, is what? Edom. The Edomites. His father was a descendant of the Edomites. So even Esau has begun to know this. And uh, it's interesting over the past couple years how much information has started to pop up about the Edomites and Esau and Idumia. Because uh, the men of the Lord, uh, through the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, have been pushing this information out for so long. that now that they uh, you got a lot of people, they go back and they study and they study the different works and they study the different uh, things that have been looked up and, and pushed out. And now they're bringing that information out. So like it. Um, this wheel, this damn chair is squeaking. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, getting into it.
it just going into it. Uh, yeah, this dude Herod, he was a he was an Edomite. See, this is the, this is the real, and this is that's another thing too. They don't uh, when when the church teaches you the story, they don't teach you this stuff. They don't teach you what lineage and who was a descendant of who, and all of that stuff matters. You know, because if you got if you got a guy in your town, uh, let's use this as an example. He's a descendant of the slave master who used to own you. You know, are you gonna trust this person to make to make decisions and and, and and are you gonna you know because we know that we come from what Israel? This guy uh, Herod, he was uh, he was king of Judea, an Edomite king of Judea under the authority of the Roman Empire. Yep, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was not an Israelite. He was an Edomite, and that's why he did this the wicked stuff that he did, which we're gonna get into. He was an Edomite. He wasn't a Jew, because you have some versions that say he's a Jew, but they finally they actually got it right on here. But he was an Edomite, right? He was the villain in the Christmas story, right, 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 right. We're gonna get to that too. And they even listed here, he was born to an Idumean man, an Edomite. That's something that they they delib deliberately have, have left out. And then he was cool with Augustus Caesar. Yeah, he was an Edomite. And this is all part of history too. You can't just omit this just because it's in the Bible. You know, people want to omit everything that's in there. These are these are real people. These are real historical figures. You know, Augustus Caesar. That's you can't deny that he was a historical figure. You can't deny these people were under him. You can't deny the different things listed by the Bible because it lines up with history. You just can't. I mean, it, it just. Hey man, it's it's just it's just something to strengthen your faith, of course. But this stuff, this stuff is real. This stuff really happened. This this energy is real. Where these Edomites, and you can see it now, the Edomites are in government and rulership over us and persecuting us. And then, of course, it goes into that in Matthew chapter two. You know, Yahweh Shah was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod. Uh, wise men came from east of Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, right? They can read the heavens and they, they read a star that led them to him and to come to worship him. Herod heard these things. He was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Yahweh should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and now Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Then Herod, which had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently. So it's interesting. He had asked the chief priests and the scribes where Yahweh was going to be born, and they gave him up. They gave up the location. He's in Bethlehem. So they, they would have they would have given up the Messiah people. These were Israelites too, who would have given up the Messiah, and uh, if it was the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, he would have been destroyed. But it was not. You know, we we know the story goes to, you know, you can read down through it. Of course, the wise men, they go, they seek out the Lord. And, you know, they, they then the angel comes in Joseph's dream, and uh, tells them to flee into Egypt. And then they flee into Egypt until uh, the death of Herod, right? And it skips through. So it's a, yeah, because you had Israelites in Egypt too. You had Israelites all over the Roman Empire. Just like in America, you got Israelites in Alaska. You got Israelites in Hawaii. You got Israelites in all these different uh, uh, American territories and, and corners of the earth where you really wouldn't think. Hell, even in Missouri, 
You go into some of these small redneck towns, you got Israelites there. But you just say, damn, I, I, I've done that. I've been driving, you know, through the country or whatever. And you will see a, a damn Mexican restaurant. You stop in there. There's some random Mexicans in, in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. You know? So it's 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 interesting. Interesting like that. But uh that's all I wanted to harp on. Um and then also another thing, uh, I, I don't know if this is a really is still a thing, but you have people who talk about uh, the Messiah has not come yet, or there is no Messiah, or they only going off the Old Testament. Well, hey, you know, you go back into Hosea. It's, uh, what is it? Yes, it's going to talk about Matthew 2 and 15, and was there until the death of Herod, right, that it might be fulfilled, which was, out, was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. So it actually references back to the prophecies uh, in a lot of these verses. It tells you, spoken by the prophets, spoken by the prophet, that um, prophets spoke, and this is what they were talking about. And I, I cross-referenced that, Hosea 11. Like, what does this say? Uh, Out of Egypt have I called a son. And what did Hosea, Hosea say? Uh, when Israel was a child, then I loved him, called my son out of Egypt. Out of Egypt, called my son. It's the same thing. Right? And then Isaiah talked about it. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Most High. That's correct. That's talking about the Lord as well. And then it also, you know, it references uh, different prophets a few times. It references Jeremiah. It says, Jeremy, it's Jeremiah. So, hey, man, history makes a reference to uh, history makes a reference to this. The other prophets from from the Old Testament make a reference to the to the Messiah. Even these Edomites make references to the Messiah. They call it history what the A.D. and O. Domini, the year of our Lord, or they'll say the Christian era or before the Christian era or B.C. So they 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 base history um, around uh, referencing our Lord because he is the most important figure in history. The things that he did, you can't just erase and wipe out. You know, you can't just use the Bible and just say, "Look, I, we're just reading this for a uh, literary source." No, there's history embedded into it, and you have to do the research. Uh, Line that history up to things that actually happened. <clears throat> but uh, and uh, if you you know if you if you're uh, just coming in or something, you want to do you want to pray for the faith. You want to pray for the understanding to come to you and Yahweh Shah will sup with you, uh, and uh, he'll he'll give you that faith. But I want to talk your ear off. Hey, with that being said, all praise to you. How about Shim Yahweh Shai? Double honest, the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone. Uh, peace and salutations to you. I came out there preaching and teaching in the four corners of the earth. Uh, peace and safety on you, too. Because uh, the times were coming up in. Uh, you're starting to see a lot more. A lot more um, of these Edomites riling up. Just like Herod did. They're starting to rile up. They're starting to see that, that this is real. They're starting to incorporate a lot more uh, uh, themes from the Bible. I'm, I'm seeing that too in cinema. They're starting to put a lot more themes from the scriptures into the movie. And so, hey, that, that energy... It's starting to take over the, the 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 different energies that we've seen so far. The Black Panthers, the Black Consciousness, the Muslims. That their energy is, is starting to dissipate. If you notice, and no, you know nobody's nobody from them is going into prophecy, and that's what uh, separates the Bible from any other so-called spiritual work or prophecy. None of those other people could prophesy. None of them could tell you what's about to happen except the Bible. But uh, that's all I had, Shalom.